felt like I found my personal style when I made this sweater. It was very transformative. <laughs> It's 5 p.m. I'm filming a video and having a beer. Hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel that's by Mandy. My name's Amanda and usually on this channel I talk about all things knitting, whatever I'm currently making or thinking about making or the yarn I've just purchased, but today I'm going to veer off a little bit and talk a little bit about how making my own clothes has helped me find my own personal style. I wanted to make this video for two reasons today. The first being that this idea of finding your own personal style, I think has been pretty popular and going around, especially on TikTok lately. And there's this idea that finding your own personal style it can also help you because you'll enjoy what you're wearing, but it can also even be a more sustainable objective because you're not falling trap to the micro trends that the fast fashion industry is pushing onto us. And you're also investing in pieces that you'll wear over and over again. Hence, theoretically, you know, decreasing the demand for maybe more fast fashion, trendier pieces that are just being pushed at us from all angles, right? The second and the main inspiration for this video was a TikTok I saw and I can't find it. Like classically, I feel like whenever you need to find a TikTok, it's literally impossible. But it was this girl and she was like walking out of a store saying how hard she feels it is, especially as a, someone in their mid twenties to shop for themselves because they feel like a lot of things that are probably in the stores they're used to shopping to are marketed towards a younger generation or let's just maybe like more trendy, she doesn't resonate with that. But then like, where's the other option? Things kind of scale older and I do agree. I feel like it's harder to shop. I think our lives have changed a lot with the pandemic. I personally used to go into the office seven days a week and now I work from home all the time. So I don't need the same clothes that I used to and I don't fit into the same clothes that I used to seven years ago, if we're being honest. So with that, I thought I'd talk about my knitting journey and how making my own clothes has assisted me in that because I feel like a lot of people are trying to find their own personal style and if making your clothes is a part of that journey for you, welcome, I'm here to help. So a little bit about me, if you haven't been on my channel before, I started knitting clothes um, in December of 2020 peak pandemic winter depression, um, but I've done how to knit for quite a while. I think as far as my clothes making journey goes, I would love to one day dip my toe into sewing, but I honestly don't really have the resources for that right now. I don't have the space and I don't really feel like spending money on a new hobby, which brings me to a very important disclaimer for this video is that Making your clothes is absolutely a privilege and I'm not by any means saying like you have to make your clothes to find your own personal style um, because it takes time and it takes, it does take money for materials and supplies um, as opposed to other like fast fashion alternatives. So I'm not one to shame people or like shame people's choices. However, I just like to talk about my experiences making clothes. And if you don't feel like that's in your journey or walk of life, I'm not here to put any pressure on you, okay? So with that, I'm gonna have a few more sips. Let's get into how it's helped me. So really, this could be the first and the last point that I present in this video, but I found for me that making my own clothes just makes me think more about what I'm going to wear. There's just a much higher investment between knitting a garment and like going to H&M and buying it because you have to think about what pattern you're going to buy, what yarn you're going to use, the materials you're going to use to knit it up, like what needles you're going to use, and then you have to spend all of the time making it. And so I have some of my things here. Like this is one of my favorite hand knit sweaters and this took me two months to make. And honestly, I don't know if I would have picked this up in a store, but I thought really long and hard and I kept looking at this pattern. This is sweater number 15 by My Favorite Things Knitwear. And I decided this is something that I want. And I wear this sweater a lot because I put more thought into it. And I think it is easy. I mean, you can still make things that you don't like and that aren't your style, 
However, I do think that the more that you make things, the more it may lead you to putting more thought into what you're making for yourself. I will also say, um, and I know this isn't the case for everyone, but I think once I started seriously making a lot of clothes, I definitely took money that I would have maybe spent at a fast fashion store and I put that into the supplies to make the clothes that I wear. And But I definitely probably still spend more money making clothes. I'm not gonna like try to lie about that. That's just kind of the reality for the materials that I use. Um, but I do feel that I have slowed down my fast fashion consumption. Hello, it's Editing Amanda. I just wanted to add two points of nuance to what I'm talking about with price. Um, the first thing is that knitting does not have to be more expensive than your current shopping budget. There are ways to make knitting less expensive than um, buying items. However, usually for the yarns that I choose to go for, they end up and this is very personal, but they end up being more expensive than like the per item cost I used to spend at fast fashion stores. So I'm usually spending more money per garment, but on the whole, I'm consuming less in fast fashion and I'm wearing um, the garments that I make more and I'm getting more out of them. So um, there's that point. I just wanted to say that and that you don't have to be spending more money um, and it doesn't have to be more expensive than what you're normally spending on shopping. Uh, you can you can find ways to fit it into your budget with um, just depending on the kind of materials that you use. So I just wanted to clarify that and that there are accessible price points for knitting and like sourcing yarn, um, whether it's from like craft stores or it's by sourcing your yarn secondhand. Those options are available um, and I just wanted to clarify that, that I'm probably spending more money per garment, but on the whole, I'm consuming and like consuming less garments and putting, bringing less garments into my wardrobe at a time. I hope that makes sense. The other caveat of this video is that obviously you cannot like knit an entire wardrobe. You kind of, you would have to probably take up sewing to like, really realistically build enough clothes to build a wardrobe unless you just want to wear like knit dresses and knit pants everywhere. And if you do, that's really cool. Like let's be friends, but that's not really super realistic for everyone, right? Okay. So that's really the main, main thesis. You just think more about the things that you're going to make versus the time you would spend thinking about it if you were buying it in the shop. In the shop? in a store, in ye old clothes shop. Number two, the flip side of that coin is that it is much more annoying spending a lot of time and effort stitching together a sweater with love in every stitch and then you don't wear it. That it's much worse than buying something that you don't wear, right? Because you have something you have a higher investment in the handmade item. So I think this has helped me even think longer and harder about the things that I'm going to put into my wardrobe. That one's pretty short and sweet, but you notice the things that you don't wear like even more because you're like, wow, no, excuse me. You're like, wow, I made that and I don't even want to wear it. So like, I definitely won't make things like that again. Or Here's what I don't like about it, and I want to change this, this, this thing. Um, so I would wear a garment like that again. I think it teaches you a lot when you have just a much more like intimate relationship with the clothes that you put on your body. And it helps you find your style in turn. It might be a more indirect way, you know, it's not like looking at Pinterest boards, but it's kind of just trial and error, right? This brings me to point number three. You think more about what your clothes are made of. So when you're knitting, obviously, there is a limit of materials that you can make your clothes out of. You have your animal fibers, your wools, your alpacas, you have your plant fibers, your cottons, your linens, you have your acrylics, and then 
I think I, I missed some in there, but that's a pretty basic overview of the different kind of materials you can make your clothes out of. But you can also focus on the color and the weight of the yarn you want to use and you know how tight are the stitches is it going to be a really loose drapey fabric or is it going to be a stiffer fabric is it going to be a layering piece that i can use or is it going to be almost like a piece of outerwear because it's so chunky and warm these are all the things that you consider when you're making something and for example i this is probably my most worn um this is my most worn sweater like ever and this is the very being the very v-neck raglan by jesse may designs it's made in this yarn called noro garden sock yarn and the color changes in it i like they just really make me gravitate towards this sweater because it's so fun and i don't think you can really buy a lot of sweaters that look like this and if you did it would cost you a heck of a lot of money so i do think that being able to hand select the materials that you're going to make your clothes out of is such a unique experience. Um, I think it makes you look at your clothes differently when you can see not only like the effort put into it, but also just like see a ball of yarn transform into a sweater or see fabric on a bolt transform into a dress. I didn't sew this, but one day I will. Number four, and this is a really big one. And I think it comes with some caveats as well. But generally speaking, when you make your own clothes, you can make a lot more decisions about the size, the fit, and the dimensions of the clothing that you're making. The huge caveat with this is that not um, all patterns are size inclusive. So it can be more of a challenge um, for people with bigger bodies to find knitting patterns, sewing patterns, etc. And I have seen things starting to change, but I'm not someone with a bigger body that like needs access to those sizes. Um, so I'm not the number one person to speak on that, but I do know that it's still an issue for people to find patterns that fit them. However, on the other hand, you do have a lot more customizable options than you would just buying a piece of clothing from a store. I can decide when I make a pattern how long I wanna make the sleeves, if I wanna make them shorter, if I wanna make them wider, if I wanna make a sweater oversized, I can make it a few size up. If I wanna make it the cropped version it's told me to, I can make that version. There's so many options and really, like I, I'll show you a few things like this, I definitely crop this when I make this. This is the Evelyn Tank by Ed Madison Marie. Basically, basically every tank top I made last year, I cropped it because I was I was in that zone. So this is a very cropped version of a pattern. And patterns are usually really easy to crop because you just knit less. Or you could just knit more on the body. Um, you can like, I don't know, there's just so many options, right? I think I knit this one a little shorter than the pattern. Some of the, some patterns I think will usually make a longer sweater. I like to hit like when things hit me mid waist, so I can do that. And this all goes back to having a more intimate relationship with your clothes. When you can customize them, you kind of start to think about things that maybe you didn't think about before, like the lengths of your sweaters or the lengths of your tops or different colors that you like or how much space you like in the armpit of your clothes. These can sound like these can sound trivial, but I want you to think about something that you have in your closet that's really cute, but you don't wear it because the fit's just kind of weird. It's like how many clothes have we had like that in our lifetime that it's like, oh, I really like this, but it's really itchy. Or I really like this, but like, it really just like hugs my armpit sweat and it gets really gross really quickly. <laughs> that was graphic. You know, there's so many instances I think that we could think of that you really can't understate how nice it is to be able to customize clothes for your own body. 
Honestly, I think as a woman in general, where clothing sizes are like so effed up, where you can be like five different sizes in five different stores, it's so nice to have that control over your clothes. And obviously patterns might size you differently, but at the end of the day, at least for most knitting patterns, you're picking your size based off your bust circumference. Um, and you can go up or down from there, depending on the amount of ease that you'd like in your project. I might be getting too in the weeds now, but basically projects will let you know like how far or how close away you want a project but to your body by inches, and that's called ease. So like five inches of positive ease means that it's five inches of space from you and your body. That kind of makes sense. So that is reason number four. Fifth reason is what I call the Ikea effect. I don't call it this, but I read somewhere once <laughs> that part of the reason that Ikea furniture works well and is popular is that is that when you make something, you have a stronger affinity towards it. For example, I have a few pieces of Ikea furniture in my um, apartment. I'm sitting by one right now, this very basic like white bar cart. I have a dresser that you will have to pry from my cold, dead hands because I put that dresser together all by myself. And it's recommended a two person job. I wouldn't recommend that. However, I did that and I'm very proud of it. And I think the same thing goes for your clothes. You will take better care of your clothes, they'll last longer. And I think that's less of a style thing, but it's you'll take care of your clothes, they'll last longer, and you'll probably be more likely to wear them that you made them. I don't really feel guilty if I have clothes that I bought from Aerie that I don't wear, but I do feel a little guilty when I don't wear things that I freaking made myself and took my own time to make to wear for me. I got a little heated. All to say that I think you're just more likely to gravitate towards thing in your, things in your wardrobe that you've put more effort into, and you're just more likely to love those items more than things that you bought at fast fashion. At fast fashion, at a fast fashion store. I just wanted to show you some of my most worn items in my wardrobe. I already showed you a few. Um, the first is sweater number 15 by My Favorite Things Knitwear. It is this cabled sweater knit in, um, mine's alpaca wool and mohair, but you can, I think the pattern just calls for wool and mohair. It's so soft and I think so pretty. I wore this on my birthday this year and I really love the color. So I wear this a lot. Um, my one friend told me that it looked like it could be in a Madewell catalog and that made my day. I think Madewell is a really big inspiration for me, for my style. I really have enjoyed making things that um, are, and I guess my other sweaters are kind of a contradiction to this, contradiction. I like pretty simple silhouettes with a little textural interest and then just making sure I pick out in colors that I like wearing and that I feel happy wearing. Um, I don't necessarily think that you need to have like a color palette for your own personal style. I don't really agree with that. Um, as long as you are making things that go with things that you wear, I think that's, or like you already own, but like I wear these with jeans, you know, like the, I'm pretty, simple that way, but I know that about myself, you know? Um, yeah, and I showed these also as well. So this was the like Anchor Sweater by Petite Knit. This is Knit in Artichoke Purple by um, Knitting for Olive. This was just knit, this was like a really cheap project. If you wanna get started making a garment, I would start with summer wear because it's really less intimidating and um, it, you get that more of a, that pay off quickly and cotton yarn can be really inexpensive. So I would I would start with summer knits because they're honestly my favorite. I wore this tank top to death last summer and I honestly think you can tell. It looks pretty well loved and it's very simple, but 
I like it. I like the little rolled collar detail. I wear it a lot. And then lastly, um, this is definitely my most worn sweater, my very V-neck raglan by Jesse May Designs in Noro sock garden yarn. It's just, I love this sweater. Like I, I like felt like I found my personal style when I made this sweater. It was very transformative. Um, so yeah, those are a few of my most worn, wear. I'm not, unfortunately. But those are some of my most worn items. Thank you for making it to the end of this video and thanks for stopping by. I know it's a little different from what I usually post, but I thought it was an interesting topic. And if you're new here, go ahead and leave a comment, say hi, I'd love to meet ya. And I hope to see y'all soon, bye. Hey, what's up?